welcome back. Now on to a very cool technique, track stacking. This is really, really useful because it's something you can often try before you start manually tracking. No one really wants to manual track. It's kind of a last resort. It's not really fun and it can be really difficult. A lot of the time going back and forth frame by frame to try and get your track to work. So track stacking is a technique where you combine multiple tracks by tracking one on top of another in order to get a more accurate result. Okay, so in order to understand that, we really just need to see what that looks like in action. I've got both of these original tracks here that weren't doing that good before in the last video. And instead of going in and doing our manual track, I'm gonna try a track stack. So what you do is you do your first track. This is our first track here that we've done. And it gave us a result that let's say was like 80% of the way there. And there's nothing really more we could do inside the node to get it any better. What you can do is take your tracker transformation, plug it into your footage, and make it a stabilize. So now this is what we get. We're just applying our first track as a stabilization to our footage. We can see all the issues it has. And now we can do another track on this piece of footage right here. So I'm gonna do another planar track. You can do a point track or a warp track. Any type of track, you can combine any type of track. Combining warp tracks is a little bit trickier and different, so we're gonna hold off on that for now. I think we can just do another planar track because the Nuke planar tracker has been treating us so well. Turn this to a planar tracker, track one frame. Let's adjust our planar shape to match the perspective of the footage. Okay, that looks pretty good. You can turn that off. Okay, and we can just continue that track now, but we actually don't need to track the whole frame range because as we know from the last video, our tracker only really messed up from 1069 to the end. So we can just do this track from here and we can stop it when it gets at that frame range. And we can actually just use the range tracker to track backwards and we need to go from 1060, we'll just do 1065 to be safe to whatever frame we're on now, 1091. There we go. Now it'll do its thing and it should stop around 1065. Perfect. Okay, I think that'll do. Now I'll go to the tracking tab and we'll create a new tracker. I'm gonna link it just so I don't confuse these two. There we go. And you plug it up and you also have to make this a stabilize for this to work. If you don't make it a stabilize, it's just gonna match move the stabilized result. So it's actually gonna go in the opposite direction. If we stabilize it, now let's see what we get. Perfect. So it did all of that manual tracking work for us. If we disable it, you can see the original track, not that good, but this one corrected everything for us. Really, really cool technique. And you can do this workflow really, really fast. You can just do a track and if it's like, eh, it's 80% of the way there, I'll just do another track on it to get it 95 to 100% of the way there. Okay, but now we run into another problem. We have two transform nodes that are both stabilizing. If we were to hook this up to our footage or our element over here and view this, it's not gonna match move anymore because it's a stabilize. What we usually do in order to make a stabilize a match move is we just copy the stabilize over and uninvert it and now it's converted to a match move. But how do you do two transformation nodes that are both acting as a stabilize? Well, this is where you need to understand how to reverse a transformation stack. So meaning a group of transform nodes. It's actually not that complicated. I'm gonna go back to this shot example to show you. But here we've got a bunch of transformations that are taking this checkerboard and each one, it gets a different and different shape. Let's just turn off the crop for now. So each one of these is applying a transformation. Well, what if we wanna invert this and get it back to its original shape. Well, what you would do is you would start from the bottom and apply each transformation from the bottom up like this. We'd copy this one, paste it below. I'll just unplug the merge. Copy this one, paste it below. Copy this one, paste it below. And then copy the top one and paste it below. So we're just reversing the order that these are applied. Now that obviously didn't work because we actually have to do one more step we have to go through each one of these and invert them. This is all matrix multiplication and math stuff I've avoided showing you because you really don't need to know about it. As a Nuke artist, that's more Nuke TD stuff. So if we just view the bottom and invert each one of these, 
you'll see we're gonna get closer and closer to our original result. All right, so now this, the top, matches the bottom. We've completely reversed this transform stack. And they perfectly match because our transforms are concatenating, right? There's no filter hit. If, uh, if I had motion blur plugged in here, then you'd see some motion blur causing some issues, but we get a perfect one-to-one -one result. So that's how that works. And actually, by the way, I might as well show you this now. Since we installed this plugin that I linked a few videos ago, I'll link it again in this video in case you don't have it installed because it's it's just the best, guys. You need to install this. My buddy Erwin made this, and now that I have it on my machine, I'm using it constantly. You can literally just copy all these, go to this transform utilities, and merge them. And since there's animation, it's going to do a frame range, but it's very quick, and I guess you don't need to copy them either. You can literally just select these, merge them, boop, and now they perfectly match. So that is so useful. Um, it's still important for you to know about track stacking because I composited for five years before ever having this tool. And you probably will be on a machine one day and you won't have this tool installed. So it's good to know how to do it the manual way, but it's super cool to know that this tool exists and does that. But let's go back to this example. We need to have this element match move and we have a stabilize stack here. So what we want to do is copy the first one, bring it over here, and just reverse the order. So instead of this being last now, we want it to be first like that, and then we need to invert both of them. So now when we view it, we have a pretty perfect track. We can turn on motion blur now, and we could use these two guys to check our track quality by just viewing the final result. And I'll crop it just so we don't crash. And now we're getting this result, which looks pretty perfect to me. This is a really good track. And if we don't want to do any of that stack reversing, we can combine these. Here we do the right frame range. Use this as our tracker and copy that to view it stabilized. It's the same thing, so whichever works. And if we go to this shot, this one is a very troublesome one, even for a manual track, because there's so much distortion and motion blur in the footage, it's really tricky to get this one to match by eye. We did a decent job in the last video getting it to match. Not bad at all, but it could have been better. And I think this was one where we could also implement some track stacking to help us out. Maybe not even for every corner, for example. Like if we wanted to do a point track to help this one out, it might just be good to do it on this point because it's gonna be hard for the point tracker to kind of track these points. We can try, but I think it might be best if we just use a point tracker for this specific spot and then maybe do manual tracks for the other parts. So let's just go ahead and try that. Let's take our original tracker, which we got from the Nuke Planer tracker which has been surprising me a lot lately about how great it is. Plug this in and invert it. Now we get this and we can see all the flaws. And let's focus on this corner. Again, when you have a perfect track, everything's gonna be perfectly still. So this moving around like this is not good. That means the track is gonna be slipping all over the place. So what I'll do is I'll just put a tracker node down, our little nuke point tracker. And I'll try and just track this area right here. And I'll turn on adjust for luminance changes. And that's it. I'll just let it go through the footage and see how it does. Okay, that looks like it did a really good job. You can see it following it there. So for right now, I'm just going to do this corner. I'm going to not worry about the other corners right now. What we can do is apply this tracker information to one point on a corner pin. And just that alone will help our track so much. All the other areas are still gonna have problems, but just watch what happens when we fix this one corner. So how we would do that is we would put a corner pin down on our element, like we saw before in the last video, what we did, where is it? We did our manual adjustment above the match move like this, and we just wanna disable it and put our points where we want them to be. We'll just do a generalized area. Let's copy the two to the from that. Now we can enable it and we're all good. And so all we wanna do is copy this tracker information to this corner pin point, okay? And you can see the two point, this, it's showing where it's located in our pixel grid. These are its pixel coordinates, and that's what a tracker outputs. It outputs the pixel coordinates. They're just animated, right? Now I'm gonna do something actually a little interesting before I copy that animation onto the point 
I'm gonna copy this corner pin just like that. They're not gonna, it's not gonna do anything, but I just want a duplicate because now when I copy this tracker onto that two point, if the position is a little different, and let's make sure, I'm, let's see our reference. Okay, so our reference frame is 1001, let's be on that frame. The track one is in a little bit of a different position than the two point. So if I parent the track to that point, it's gonna move it to that position. There are ways to offset it, but I'm just doing a manual offset by having another corner pin. You'll see what that looks like in a second. So let's just open the corner pin. We want the two, two point, this one. Let's open the tracker, let's control click it, right click, copy the animation, and then paste it into the two absolute. Okay, so you see what I mean? It moved it to that position, and now it's animating based on that track, and only that point is animating like that. So if we want, now we can just use this corner pin adjuster that we made to put it kind of in a better spot but let's look at a stabilized view of our vinyl. Let's turn off the corner pin for now and see how bad it was. Okay, so you can see how bad that corner is moving all over the place. Watch what happens when we turn on our new track. Pretty perfect, I'd say. So you can see the power in this technique. If you want, you can mess around and try and do the other corners. The tracker actually should do decent, especially for like this corner. I think it can grab that throughout the shot. You'll probably have a little bit of trouble on the top corners because there's all these lighting changes. And so this is why you'd probably need to do a method of track stacking and manual tracking on this one. And if you wanted to do that, you would just manually track with this corner pin up here. Wherever the problem frames are, you would just set a keyframe, like let's say right here, two, four. Let's view the stabilize on this frame then just move it up. So now you're manually tracking and track stacking, okay? So I'm gonna stop the video there. You can come in and see this little visualization if you want to kind of understand the reversing of transformations. I'm, I just made this so you can kind of have this here as well if you're ever on your own shot and you forgot and you wanna come into this script or just come back to this video, you can see what the exact steps are because I know this can be tricky to remember so I just wanted to have this little visualization made for you guys just in case you forget or if you want it for your notes but yeah that's gonna be it for this video I'll see you guys in the next one